Good afternoon. Amit, distinguished directors of uh, some of the best business schools in the country, delegates. While I was going through the communication which I received uh, from IMC that uh, this year they've decided to recognize me as one of the distinguished alumnus. And then I looked at the theme of this conference, uh, management education for the new era. So what I realized was maybe there's a very unfelt bias in the jury to really recognize somebody from the old school, from the dinosaurs era of the management education. And to sort of balance that, aptly recognize a great entrepreneur and a professional from the new era. And in a way, you see the big difference. Uh, I'm very much from the old era. I'm sort of dressed up for the occasion. Neeraj is cool in his uh, t-shirt and uh, represents really the new era. So there is that big diversity, which I think uh, IMC is also trying to drive through this process. So it is with a perspective that uh, I'm really honored to accept this award. And I'm happy that a senior citizen like me has been sort of recognized. Uh, well, coming back to the time which I spent at XLRA, many times it looks almost uh, long, long ago. It's about 39 years ago when I stepped into the campus at XLRA. The batch sizes were very small. Uh, again, many of you from XLRA will realize that we have business management where there's just about 38 of us and in the personal management, there are about 40. So it was a very, very small batch size, which made the learning experience on campus very personal and intense. Uh, in a way, I think many of you are teaching in schools. I know the realities now are very different because you're also driven by other elements of how you need to be relevant in the context of being an organization. But our experience was there was a lot of one-on-one -on -one with professors. Since most of the faculty lived on campus, the learning really got beyond the classrooms also. And the smaller size class also gave opportunity for a set of very diverse curricular, co-curricular, and extracurricular activities. Um, many of us who just played one or two sports experimented with a lot because this is a very small uh, group size. And hence, the whole process of development uh, was also far more holistic. Uh, I see that the challenge today is very different. Uh, obviously, batch sizes are large. I think uh, the infrastructure at campuses are creaking. Obviously, nobody has the ability to have an infrastructure like I am where we are here today. But I'm sure that the learning methods in the pedagogy has kept in pace, keeping in mind that I think the size of the learning group, the cohorts itself, has substantively become larger. But it's a good time to sort of take a step back and see what is really going to be relevant in the future. And I really thought, based on my experience as a leader, as an entrepreneur, I'll share with you what I'm seeing as the future and what are some of the essential elements uh, which I think thought leaders like you need to be thinking about. As I reflect back on my journey in the corporate world, a lot of the experiences and learnings in XLRI has helped me evolve as a better leader and a better entrepreneur. Clearly, I think it gave a sense in terms of being data-driven on solving problems, how are you structured, and how do you really sort of put the problem ahead rather than really being fascinated about what you think is right. Uh, but will the same learning approaches which we went through, maybe a mix of case studies, a bit of lectures, uh, be relevant uh, in the future? My answer would certainly be no. The world today is changing and what I think many of us read is that it's a VUCA world. It's a volatile, uncertain, complex, 
and ambiguous world. Klaus Schwab, who is the executive chairman of the World Economic Forum, has said that even now, it's the time for the fourth industrial revolution, what people call as Industry 4.0. And we are moving into a phase of business where the physical, digital, and biological worlds are converging. And this convergence is going to have tremendous impact on every individual, every society, and every industry. And let's make it clear that this is not going to take a huge amount of time. If you look at every big transition which has happened, starting from the first printing press to the steam engine, what has been consistent is that the pace of adoption in terms of number of years has dramatically decreased. Today, a company which brings out this uh, game called Angry Birds, in the last game which they brought out, they got 5 million customers in just 24 hours. So, I think the pace of adoption or the pace to which enterprises will move to industry 4.0 is going to be very rapid. And hence, I think is the need for people engaged in management education to think about what is it that is really going to be relevant in the new converged world. The World Economic Forum also predicts that by 2025, we'll see commercial use of nanometals which are 200 times stronger than steel and a million times thinner than the human hair. So the convergence which is going to happen soon will also drive interoperability of businesses, information transparency with your customers, self-service. Customers would want more and more services where they drive what they need. Not necessarily they're not going to pick up a product which you say they need to take, uh, and decentralized decision making. All these have huge impact in the manner in which we need to prepare future leaders and how our organizational structures evolve to meet the needs. Uh, in my opinion, in the new world, the single most important aspect is curiosity and continuous learning. Our education and pedagogy has largely focused on people. If you look at our basic education, it's very much in terms of trying to mug concepts and not necessarily apply concepts. And even in higher educational institutions like management schools, yes, I think there's a lot of teaching by case study method, but still we need to go back and see how we're going to ignite the childlike curiosity of people and help them get into a mindset of continuous learning. The second aspect which I think is very important is the courage to experiment with solutions and fail. I think in a society like us, we are very, very wary of failures. Uh, starting from maybe the first standard which our kids go to, we don't want people to experiment, we don't want them to fail. And in the future, in an uncertain world, failure is actually a part of what is going to be in your way in which you build businesses. So how is it that the educational curriculum is going to help people develop that courage and the ability to face failures is important. And the third aspect is really collaboration. I think in the world of the future, no one person, irrespective of what an expert he is, I think he needs to collaborate with both internal and external ecosystems to find appropriate solutions to his business challenges. Uh, and here again, I think we need to have a very different thinking because our systems are essentially configured for people to compete and be the best. While I think you need to compete, you also need to collaborate. Uh, so how are we going to bring that mindset change of people collaborating and together finding solutions is I think a very key aspect of how future leaders need to evolve. While courage, curiosity, and collaboration are important, I would think these should be built on the foundation of empathy and concern for the society. Through our curriculum, we must develop leaders who are empathetic and appreciate that they have a stewardship role in giving back to society 
and making the world a better place to live in. So as a part of our learning approach, can we make business graduates go through internships in social organizations, which are many times solving very difficult problems because as a country, I think we have a huge number of problems to solve. Uh, and many of those social enterprises will benefit a lot from the intellect which comes from the business school graduates. Uh, so as a part of the curriculum, can we weave in or embed an essential criteria that they need to spend an internship with a social organization solving a key social problem, which gives them the ability to empathize and build that focus and curiosity to solve large social problems. Uh, I realized that in the last one and a half days, you have debated and brainstormed on what is going to be the management pedagogy for the new era. But I would strongly urge the thought leaders here to discuss how do you build empathetic leaders who are socially conscious uh, and have the courage, curiosity, and the collaborative mindset to build a world where businesses, societies, and individuals thrive. That should be the vision and direction of management education. And in doing so, I think we lead the world in thought leadership. Thank you very much for this opportunity, and I hope you have a great uh, session here. Thank you very much, sir, for that thought-provoking question. Thank you. Yes, I know. Uh, moving yes, forward. Yes, I know. I know. It's now time to present the first IMC DAA 2000 award. May I request Dr. Ashish Pani to read his citation?